All right, guys, quick video to explain a few things. It's just a really simple one, actually. Recently, there was a bit of confusion. and You've got to be careful of the, uh, the confusion that can happen um, when in the automotive mechanical industry, it can be a bit of slang words used. So I'm just going to explain one of those so there's no confusion. Some things we want to get really technical on, you know, like specialist area, injector replacement jobs, but when it comes to suspension, it's kind of whatever, right? So we're just here changing over. You can see on the far right over here is an old McPherson strut out of the front of a, a Ford Ute. And the one next to it is the one we've just swapped. You know, we reused the top hat on the top. This same as we do generally on the Prados. Uh, and there's the old strut here. And then of course there's the other one you there. We haven't, we need to swap whatever, you know what I mean? We need to get that top hat and put it on top over here. This is the old one here, you know what I mean? But what do we got in the mix right in the middle? We got a, we've got a Prado one, something different. So yeah, we were just over here, right? At the, you can see we're wheel bearing there, wheel bearing getting uh, pressed in and uh, using the screen compressor over here. We were just over there uh, compressing these springs and I thought to myself, I should probably explain to you what the difference between the McPherson strut, because there a bit of confusion the other day somewhere on Facebook, someone was writing and I just call it a strut. So I want to be really clear. Any of these, I'm going to call them struts, the struts. Okay. Technically, if you want to get a little bit clearer about it though, this is only this and this and these two are struts and they're, they're technically struts because it's a style, it's a McPherson strut, okay? Now, out of the Prados and similar like this, it's not actually, it's not a McPherson strut, okay? So it is a coilover, it's not a shocker because a shocker doesn't have the coil over it, that's why, you know, you can call it a coilover, that's kind of like, you know, pretty well what a lot of people call it as well and that's correct, okay? And it's because it's a different, it's a double wishbone, the lower control arm's a double wishbone type suspension where this one, right, this setup, it's only got a single, hang on a sec, I've got a car to Sorry about that guys, I'm getting a uh, Prado dropped off on a tow truck. It is a 120. It's got uh, some power steering problems of some sort, so very rare. So it'll be interesting to see what we find with that. You'll have to make sure you subscribe with a bell on, stay tuned and we'll let you know what we find with it. It's also getting injectors and all that sort of stuff replaced as well. So another big job. Anyway, back onto this subject here, right? It's the single straight lower control arm, if you like, that goes in between here. And then it's got usually like a camber bar or rod or shaft, whatever you want to call it, that controls, depends what it's called on each vehicle. They all vary. There's a lot of variations in suspension, which is why we just slangly call it a strut, right? So if we're talking about Prado, you want struts and shocks, mate, you know, they're the struts and the shocks aren't even here in the picture, right? But they're not, I know they're not technically struts, they're coilovers, but you know, coilover is two words, coilover, 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 coilover. What's easier to say, coilover or strut? Strut, grab the struts, grab the struts, the struts, the struts, the struts, the strut your stuff. Anyway, right, so hopefully that's explained for you. Double wishbone suspension, bang, coil over. These are struts that go on a single lower control arm usually. Uh, personally, I like the double wishbone because then it's it holds the front end a lot more solidly and all that you've got two bushes in the lower control arm, which is the ones that if you treat them hard and at really high Ks, eventually they do chop out, that sort of thing, um, and you need to replace them. But with the uh, McPherson strut, this strut, these ones here, this one here, that one there, that one and that one, because you've got the single arm, you need something to hold it from moving back and forward, and that means a number of other bushes. W one at the control arm end, right? You know, like, uh, you know, it's hard to explain here, and one at the other end. So there's more bushes and more moving parts involved by having that strut, McPherson strut type setup. Definitely prefer Toyota system with the coil over and the double wishbone, okay? So technically we've got it covered, Hopefully I explain myself really well and exactly what I mean and you learnt something if you did please give us a thumbs up uh, There you go. That's a pretty short one I'm gonna go deal with this car coming off the tow truck and that'll be it if I don't think of anything else Please subscribe turn the bell and give us the thumbs up and Bada bing bada boom in the comments. Did you learn something or did you know that already? Thanks guys. See ya Oh, yeah, you know me. I always think of something else to tell you now uh, hmm, what I wanted to say was it's really important to use a professional spring compressor on a lot of suspension with these They're fairly light duty compared to the full drive stuff 
and you might get away with using some dodgy bench spring compressors but when it comes to some of the heavy duty four wheel drive coils that need to be compressed to fit into that strut or coil over into that space between the top hat and the seat um, you need to be really careful how you do it so advise we use the Brannick 7400 on the wall and uh, it does the job really well the other thing we do which it's each to their own you're supposed to hook in those hooks at the bottom of the coils there which does scratch them a little bit and at the top as, as well but what we do if we can get it all nice and square and we feel safe doing so we put the top hooks over the top of the top hat that way it keeps it all even we actually feel a bit safer because it's more even and it's compressing less of the spring so it's less likely to damage the spring do you get what i mean if you grab your spring with your hooks say there like some people do and clamp it down ah! you'll damage the spring in this area here right where if you put your hooks down here and up over the top and then compress it it's less likely you're going to damage the springs and learning and thinking about that comes with experience some people are so busy they haven't get, even got time to think about it lucky we do take the time to think about it anyway guys hopefully that's it now because you know that little extra bit of info if i think of anything else bada bing i'll let you know see ya So I thought we may as well show you the vehicle. So this is a BA or BF Falcon. I think it's a BF, um, BA, BA Falcon right the first time. Uh, the upper control arm, you can see very similar to the Prado. Uh, a little bit smaller, lighter duty and smaller bushes, but very similar. And down the bottom, you can see on some vehicles, it's just a straight out. So the earlier ones had the lower control arm come straight out and they had a separate rod going from the control arm here across to the front, which meant a separate bush there and another bush here. Now, the way they've changed to on the BA back, back in the day, obviously not anything recently, is bang. So you've got the bush there and another one there. So that holds this whole thing square. And your strut goes obviously either side over here. You've got to be careful that the ABS line, but the McPherson strut goes either side of that control arm like that. Anyway, that's the difference between uh, the, the actual McPherson strut and a Prado double wishbone with a coil over. Bada bing. All right, so I thought I'd show you uh, what it looks like when the struts are back in. All right, struts, yes, these are struts. See the way, like I tried to demonstrate, see how it splits and goes either side of the uh, control arm. We'll have a look from this side as well, all right. Don't worry, I didn't recommend any Bilsteins either, but anyway, that's all good. Each to their own, you know, you got a price pointer. Anyway, that's the configuration on one of these. I know it's not that much interesting compared to a Prado or Hilux, is it? Anyway, guys, hopefully you uh, learned something of that, just explaining the difference between the McPherson strut and the coil over. That's a butter bing, butter boom. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, turn the bell on, and yeah, give us a thumbs up if you got something out of it. See ya. To wrap this one up, all I'm going to say is if you feel like getting yourself a chip or a tuner or a high performance vehicle to go faster, perhaps a Prado or a Hilux is the wrong choice for you, or you need a second or third vehicle and maybe this is something for you. These things are fun, they boogie, and you can do some modifications, you know, 
get it a uni chip and get it a bigger intercooler and an air intake and a bit of extra boost and whatever you want, you know, and it'll go. Anyway, bada bing, bada boom, what a beast.